Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my last day to teach a series that I've entitled The Christian First Aid Kit. I've been teaching on this for six weeks. This is our sixth part in a six-part teaching. Today's our last day, and I encourage you to please get the materials. Also, I've got a CD that was made at a recent Gospel Truth Seminar. I've got a DVD of this teaching, but then I've got a separate teaching here entitled The Positive Ministry of the Holy Spirit that covers this same thing. I've only taught on this for three days here on television, and yet there's over five hours worth of teaching in that series. So this is really a, a powerful teaching, a major uh, principle that God has used in my life, and I'm just barely scratching the surface on it here on uh, television. So I encourage you to please go to our web, and you can download this, or you can call in and order it, and uh, I'd encourage you to get that teaching. I've been talking out of John chapter 16, and Jesus said it's actually better to have the Holy Spirit in us than it is to have Him in His physical body with us. And the reason that most people don't uh, agree with that assessment is because they have thought that the Holy Spirit is the one that makes them miserable and convicts them and condemns them. And I've been showing the last few days that that is not the Holy Spirit. It's our own conscience. At the very least, it's our own conscience that condemns us and makes us miserable. And at the very worst, it's our conscience aggravated and amplified by the devil. But it's not God who is giving us this sense of unworthiness and guilt. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, He's called a comforter, not the agitator, not the condemner. And so it says in John chapter 16, verse 8, And when He, the Holy Spirit, has come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. There's three things listed here. And then in the next three verses, Jesus goes into explanation because he knew that this would be misapplied. So he explains it. And yet it's amazing how people have just ignored his explanation. It doesn't say that the Holy Spirit convicts us of sins, plural, but he convicts us of the singular sin of not believing on Jesus. In verse 9, it says, of sin because they believe not on me. The Holy Spirit convicts you of that sin. If you haven't been born again, the Holy Spirit is not going to convict you really of your adultery, your lying, your stealing, murder, whatever. It's the fact that you haven't believed on Jesus who paid for all of these other sins. Now, if a person is under deception and thinking, well, I don't have any sin. I've always been perfect. The Holy Spirit may point out, oh, well, what about this lust that you had in your heart? What about this affair that you had? What about this? And he may show you an individual act of sin to convince you that you do have this sin of unbelief. But it's the sin of unbelief. It's like an onion or something. If you just, you know, there's layers, but you can peel them back and you get down to the core of it. The core of every sin is just the fact that you aren't believing on Jesus. And so that's the way that he deals with an unbeliever. It's not all of these other individual actions. It's just the single thing of what are you going to do with Jesus? People are going to stand before God and aren't going to answer for their individual sins unless they reject Jesus. So really the Holy Spirit deals with them over this issue of are you believing and trusting in Jesus? And then even after you're a believer, the Holy Spirit deals with believers on the same level. It's not the fact that why aren't you studying the Word? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't? But the Holy Spirit will say, why don't you trust Jesus? Why is it that you're looking for satisfaction and you're trying to fill the emptiness with all of these parties and with all of the movies and the fact that you just can't sit still and you've always got to be doing something else? Why don't you just trust Jesus? Why don't you build a relationship with Him? It's a positive ministry. It's not the negative ministry that He's been credited with. And you know, when I was a kid, I don't know how this happened, but I, it's just like I transposed this or I translated it into my own language. When it says that the Holy Spirit convicts of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, I would just automatically think He's going to convict me of every time I do something wrong. Sins, plural, 
not sin singular. Then he's going to show me that I'm unrighteous, and because of that, God's upset, and if I don't repent, I'm going to be judged. That's not what this is saying. The Holy Spirit convicts us of one sin, the sin of not believing on Jesus, and then in verse 10, it says, of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. The Holy Spirit doesn't convict of unrighteousness. He convicts us that we are the righteousness of God. Boy, that's a paradigm shift. That is exactly opposite what most people believe. Most people believe that the Holy Spirit is constantly just showing you that how unrighteous you are, and you've missed it here. And again, I say that if anybody whether it's the Holy Spirit or anybody, was just constantly pointing out everything wrong and telling you how unworthy you are, you wouldn't like that person. You wouldn't like that person to be around you. You don't like every single flaw amplified. And yet this is basically what Christianity has presented as the ministry of the Holy Spirit, is to show you your unrighteousness. This doesn't say He convicts you of unrighteousness. He convicts you of righteousness because... Jesus is gone to the Father, and we don't see him anymore. When Jesus was here on this earth, Jesus would go in to publicans, people who were thieves and liars. He would go in with prostitutes and harlots, and he had some of these people who were, you know, the ones rejected by religion actually follow him and be some of his followers. He made Levi, a, t a tax collector, one of his disciples. And... Jesus, through his example, showed that God was reaching out to the people that were rejected and criticized and condemned by religion. But now that he isn't here in his physical body anymore, this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, is to build us up and to let us know that we are righteous, that we're in right standing with God and that God's not upset. I bet you every person watching this program has heard somebody stand up in church and talk about how that they were doing something wrong, but the Holy Spirit just convicted them and showed them how unrighteous they were. That's not what this is saying. You know what this is actually depicting? And I, most of you have probably never seen this, but this would be more descriptive if you said that somebody stood up and says, you know, I haven't been seeking God. I've been doing the wrong things. I've been out living in sin. I was just doing everything wrong, and yet the Holy Spirit came and showed me that through Jesus, I'm still righteous. And it just drew me back to God because I saw the goodness of God and how God loved me even in spite of how I acted. That's what this is talking about. He convicts us of righteousness. He convicts us, convinces us that we are the righteousness of God. You know, the vast majority of people watching this program do not believe you are the righteousness of God. You might believe that you're forgiven, that you wouldn't go to hell when you die, but to say that you are righteous, most of you would choke on that. Most of you would fear that God is going to strike you dead. You, do not, you are not convinced and convicted that you are the righteousness of God. But it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that He... God the Father, or he who knew no sin, was made to be sin for us. That's talking about Jesus was made sin by God the Father that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's not just something that takes place in the future. We are now the sons of God, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. We are now righteous in him. The truth is that in your born-again spirit, you are created in righteousness and true holiness, Ephesians 4, 24. You are righteous, and the Holy Spirit is, con is sent to convict you of this, convince you of it, and to let you know that you're in right standing with God, that all of your debt has been paid, that God is not angry with you anymore. Your sins have been forgiven, past, present, and even future. The sins you haven't committed yet have already been forgiven. And the Holy Spirit is sent to make you feel the love and the acceptance, this righteousness of God. And yet the vast majority of people watching this program are not convinced that you're righteous. You go around with a sense of unworthiness and unrighteousness. I go into churches all the time and hear people just cry out and pray and say, Oh God, please make me righteous. Well, they need to get born again. 
Because when you get born again, you are created righteous in your spirit. And if they are born again, then they need to understand and believe this and yield to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you that you are in right standing, that he's not mad at you anymore. As it says over in Isaiah chapter 54, I believe it's around verse 10 or 11, it says, He won't be angry with you, nor wroth with you, nor will he rebuke you ever, that the hills may depart, the mountains be cast into the sea, but his loving kindness, his covenant of peace will never be removed from you. Man, the Holy Spirit will convict you of these things. And yet most people think that the Holy Spirit is there to convict them of how sorry they are and how far short they've fallen. No, the Holy Spirit will only deal over one thing, about relationship with God. And even if you're out committing adultery, he'll say, why don't you trust the Lord? Why don't you honor God? This isn't honoring God. This is just indulging your flesh. He'll convict you in a positive way about you need to trust in the Lord. And then he'll say, but you know what? Even though you've done this, you are the righteousness of God. And then the next thing it says, he'll reprove the world of judgment. In verse 11, it says of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. This isn't talking about that he reproves you of your individual action of sin, shows you that you're unrighteous, and if you don't repent, you're going to be judged. No, this is showing you that you, just one thing is needful, and that is that you need to make Jesus your personal Lord. You need to trust him. You need to believe on him. And regardless of what you've done, you are the righteousness of God. He will convict you of righteousness, and he will convict you that the devil is the one who's judged. Instead of you feeling like I'm going to receive judgment, the Holy Spirit will turn it around and let you know that you're the one with the authority and power. The devil is the one that's going to be judged. It's the devil who is coming under the wrath and the punishment of God. See, if we could understand this, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is a positive ministry. It's not a negative ministry that's making you feel miserable and condemned. Brothers and sisters, that's not God. At the very least, it's your conscience that is convicting you. At the very worst, it's your conscience amplified by the devil that is making you feel this guilt and condemnation. And usually the way that happens is because religion has come and preached the Old Testament law I'm telling you that that is not the way that God is dealing with you. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. It's a positive ministry. He wants to build you up. He wants to tell you that God loves you. See, instead of saying, why are you taking this dope? There's a reason that that's called dope. It's because you're stupid and I'm mad at you and you're, I'm angry. No, the Holy Spirit will come and say, why do you take this pill? It's, it's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to hurt your health. It's going to possibly cause you to lose respect to people, to lose your job. There's just on and on all of this consequence. Why would you do something like that? Because you're miserable. And instead of coming to the Lord and letting God heal your heart and letting God soothe you and give you a sense of worth and value, you're going to turn to a pill. And you're going to suffer all of these consequences just for the brief 30 minutes or hour or day or whatever it is that you're high and that you're able to escape and get away from it. The Lord will talk to you in a way that why would you do it that way instead of letting me meet your needs? Believe on me. Trust in me. I'll give you hope. I'll give you satisfaction. See, that's what's really wrong with all of this. And you can go through any sin. It doesn't matter what it is. And the bottom line, if you just keep going down to the root, if you go to the very bottom layer, it's the fact that you aren't trusting in God. You aren't relying on Him. And so the Holy Spirit is constantly there <clears throat> to bring you into relationship with Him, to get you to trust on Jesus, to tell you that Jesus is your best friend, that He'll treat you better than any prostitute ever would than any uh, extramarital affair, than any alcohol or drug would ever do. Jesus can supply your needs. See, the Holy Spirit, he may point out that, yes, what you're doing is wrong, but it's not because he's angry at you. He's already placed your judgment upon Jesus. He's wanting to bring you into relationship. Jesus has already paid for this. Jesus has already borne your punishment. 
Why are you lying about this and trying to get around things? Just be honest and upfront. You're forgiven. And he'll try and he'll convict you in a way that draws you closer to the Lord. It's all about relationship with him. It's not rules and regulations. You know what I've been saying here the last few days? Some people say, well, you know, I don't understand the big deal that you're making over this. One way or the other, you still are supposed to live holy and you're not supposed to commit adultery and you're not supposed to get drunk and you're not supposed to dip or cuss or chew and go with those that do and on and on. And you talk about this. What's the difference? The difference is that instead of God being angry with me and punishing me and rejecting me, the Holy Spirit will go to the root of that and say, you know why you're doing this? Because you aren't trusting in Jesus. Because you aren't having the relationship with Jesus that is available to you. If you would let Jesus be everything to you in this area, you wouldn't need this dope. You wouldn't need the drugs. You wouldn't need the sex. You wouldn't need all of these diversions. You wouldn't need all of this. The Lord loves you. See, it's a positive ministry. You know, I've ministered to a lot of people in, in crisis situations. And there's lots of times that what people have done is wrong. I'm not saying that it's right. But I'm able to go in and say, but I love you and I don't want you to have to leave. And I go in and I express the fact that I love them, I care about them. And because of that, this is why I'm telling them that you need to stop this and stop this. And if people can understand that you love them, and they will accept whatever you've got to say. You know, I am very blunt with people. I tell people the truth. I'm not going to reject the truth for them. I'm going to tell them, and if they reject it, that's their decision. I am very blunt with people. But I, most of the time, people appreciate it because they know that I love them, and I'm saying this to try and bring them into relationship with God. And if they can see that you love them, they'll accept whatever it is that you've got to give. And likewise, if we could see that the Holy Spirit is not nailing us over all of these things, individual sins that we've done, but just one sin, one thing, and that is, how are you relating to Jesus? Are you trusting in Him? Or are you in unbelief? Are you believing that He paid for your sins, or are you trying to pay for your own sins? See, if you could just boil it down to that and understand, well, then it would be a very positive ministry. And we would recognize that the Holy Spirit is our friend, that God gave him to us so that we would never be alone, that he would always be there to encourage us. And that would turn it into a positive ministry. And we could actually embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And like Jesus said, we could recognize that it is so much better to have the Holy Spirit within me 24 hours a day than it would be to just have Jesus in his physical body with me Man, I have the Holy Spirit inside of me that is inspiring me and drawing me and constantly building me up, the encourager, the comforter. What a powerful, powerful ministry. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we have not fully appreciated this. And there's a lot of ways that we begin to draw on this. One of the things is you're going to have to renew your mind. As long as you have a miss understanding of the Holy Spirit and you are accepting this guilt and condemnation as being from the Holy Spirit, if you keep attributing that to the Holy Spirit, you'll never embrace His ministry and let Him encourage you. So you've got to take the truth. And John chapter 8, verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Once you know this and once you get your mind renewed, that is one of the necessary steps. You've got to get out from under this wrong thinking that the Holy Spirit is nailing you every time you do something wrong and showing you you're unrighteous and you're going to be judged if you don't repent. You need to get rid of that mindset and go to the Word of God and tell yourself the truth. But once you receive that, then you need to yield to the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, one of the ways that I do this is through praying in tongues. You know, I talked about this about a week and a half or so ago and we had a lot of people call in and a lot of good things happen. But I tell you, this is powerful because when you pray in tongues, it says in Jude chapter 1, verse 20, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. 
Well, that's powerful. When you are praying in tongues, you are praying in the Holy Spirit. You build yourself up on your most holy faith. And verse 21 says, you keep yourself in the love of God. God's love is always turned on. He never turns it off. It's never God's transmitter that's the problem. It's our receiver. And one of the ways we get the truth, yes, but then you also have to release it. And when you start praying in tongues, it's just like you flip a switch. You start the flow, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will go to convicting you that, man, God loves you. You're trusting in Him and relying on Him. You are righteous, that you're the one with authority. The devil is the one that's been judged. His, he's had his power taken from him. You're the one. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. See, the Holy Spirit will go to convicting you of all of these things. But for me, when I pray in tongues, is one of the ways that I activate this and get this power flowing. And I know that there's many of you watching this program that you have listened to the things I've said and you say, man, that's nearly too good to be true. You desire it. You want it. And yet, when you turn this program off, you don't know how to get from where you are to where I'm talking about you being. And, and you just, you don't know what to do. Well, you need to get the materials. You need to renew your mind. But you know, you could also call and you could have someone pray with you. They can send you the materials, but then they could pray with you that you would receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you would speak in tongues. And when you receive this gift, you can just start praying in tongues. Isaiah 28 says, This is the rest, and this is the refreshing wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And you speak in tongues, and the Holy Spirit starts just giving you comfort supernaturally. The Holy Spirit builds you up on your most holy faith and keeps you in the love of God. It'll just, it'll make you feel the presence of God. It'll, it'll help you tremendously. And so you need to receive this positive ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I'd like to offer the people that are on our helpline right now. We have a number on your screen all around the world. You can call and you have people that will not only give you the product, but they will pray with you. And I tell you, these people that are on our phones are some of the most awesome people around. Many of them are friends of mine. The vast majority of them are Bible college graduates. They themselves have begun to understand and appreciate and receive this positive ministry of the Holy Spirit. Every single one of those people on the phones pray in tongues. And they know the benefits of it. And they can help you to receive this. But I just want to encourage you to receive this positive ministry of the Holy Spirit. And let me also mention that today is my last day to make this teaching available, we have CDs, we also have DVDs, and then I have an entire series here that's four teachings, about five hours worth of teaching that goes into more detail on the positive ministry of the Holy Spirit. And it would supplement what I've talked about here on the program. And today's going to be our last day to make any of these materials. It's our last day to offer the Christian first aid kit. So I encourage you to listen to our announcer as, they, as he gives you this information and call or write today. And remember, don't only get the materials, but ask somebody to pray with you. And praise God, you need to start receiving this positive ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then join me again next week as we continue the gospel truth. Andrew's complete teaching titled Christian First Aid Kit was recorded live at a recent Gospel Truth seminar. This series has over six hours of teaching and is available on either audio CD or DVD. Each is available for 19 pounds. This teaching is also available on DVD as seen on our daily TV program. You can receive it for 19 pounds when you contact us. Or you can get the Christian First Aid Kit as part of the Survival Kit package. In addition to Christian First Aid Kit, this package also includes the Christian Survival Kit, a 16-part series. Together, these two series provide 22 hours of teaching. The entire package has a catalog value of 55 pounds. But today, you can get the Survival Kit package for just 50 pounds when you order. The sixth audio teaching in today's series is available for three pounds when you write or call. But if you're simply unable to afford it, 
Andrew and his partners will provide this sixth CD titled Christian First Aid Kit Part 6, free of charge. Andrew mentioned his teaching titled The Positive Ministry of the Holy Spirit. This product is available on CD for 13 pounds when you contact us. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44 1922 473 300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Or you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in Warwickshire, England for the Grace and Faith Family Camp May 27th through the 30th and in Colorado Springs, Colorado for the Summer Family Bible Conference July 4th through the 8th. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. Have you ever wanted to check out back issues of Gospel Truth Magazine from Andrew Womack Ministries? They're available online at awmi.net. Just log on to our website, look to the left and click on Extras. Then look to the left again and click on Online Magazines. Once you're there, you're free to browse through our selection of Gospel Truth magazines from years past. Check out some great articles and be sure and check out the current issue while you're at it. Gospel Truth Magazine, now available online at awmi.net. Rusty nail nearly destroyed this young man's life. We got to admit you to the hospital right away. We think it's best to amputate your leg as soon as possible, maybe even within the hour. I felt like, no, this is not the thing to do. So I talked to the doctor, I was like, is there any other way? Massive doses of IV antibiotics and pain meds. Months in a medically induced coma. An active athlete and musician confined to a wheelchair and crutches. Witness Wednesday morning's miracle. Don't miss it. Log on to www.awmi.net. Look to the left. Click on Ministry News and discover what's happening at Andrew Womack Ministries. Thank you.